Good morning, everybody. Nice to see you. Hello, thank you for joining me. Let's get comfy. Welcome. This is our first day of International Nature Journaling Week. And welcome to the throng. It's beautiful. We're going to have a lovely time. This is a fantastic initiative. I started, uh, I joined this, all three years ago. And I thought that I'd just have a go and see how I did. I had nothing else to do at the time. Oh, that's a bit, that, how that happened, I have no idea. And I was absolutely hooked because I've, dis, I've just discovered that I love it. And it started a whole new passion with journaling and going out and painting with girlfriends. And I just love it, love it. And I'm hoping that we can kind of inspire that sort of thing with you as well. It would be beautiful, it'd be perfect to do that. Every day has its own theme, so we're running just for the week. And we're going to be thinking about that theme for the day. And today is appreciation. And do you know something? There is just so much to appreciate in nature, isn't there? I love my garden. I'm an absolute mad person for my garden. And those of you who know me very well will know that I have a greenhouse full of strange plants, lots of cacti and succulents and, and, and strange things. I grow um, carnivorous plants and I like things like pineapples and uh, all sorts of strange things. And they're called my weirdos. And so they, they inspire me with lots and lots of different things. But I'd like to be here. I'm going to be here for the next three days with you. And we're going to explore all sorts of things. I want to sit down and go through our journals and enjoy what we're doing with our journals. I'll show you in a second, just one minute. If you would like more inspiration, so if you're watching live and if you want to look into this a little bit more, go along to the Nature, the International Nature Journaling Week website. And there is oodles on there to inspire you, lots and lots. At 11 o'clock, there's a Zoom party, would you credit, that's today. And it's a sharing party, so it's a chance to show people, you know, your journals and what you might have done. All right, so you don't have to do that today, but you could go and have a little look and see what other people are up to if you wanted to. And Later on, we've got a video there and it's from a chap called, what's his name? Let me just check because I'm rubbish at names. Don't ever rely on me for a name. Tim Pond is to, has got a video up about how to sketch a cactus. So that's right up my street, of course, with my babies all in the greenhouse. There's lots and lots there. There's also um, a video about journaling, nature journaling in Senegal. Hey, how on earth would we ever get to see Senegal unless we were really intrepid travellers? But it's a good way, isn't it, to sit down and be on your internet and to do a bit of armchair travelling. So lots and lots going on this week, and I think there's plenty there to excite everybody. But today we're going to think about appreciation, what that means to us, and I'm going to paint something for you and show you how I work my way through it. I'm going to talk to you about where I think I want to go with tomorrow's work. Tomorrow's another subject. And we will just quietly have a play with watercolours and a bit of drawing and the bits and pieces that I've got next to me. Let me show you what I've got. So I'm going to flip the camera again. So watch out because it will all be going a bit whirly again. Sorry about that. And we'll have a look at my journal, shall we? Let's do that first. So there's my inspiration. You can see my front garden from where you are there. And the rockery this year has been absolutely beautiful. Um, nature has rewarded us this year, but I don't know about you and where you are. It's really cold here. I found it really, really chilly. I'd, I don't know about getting my blooming summer clothes out. It's just not good. Not good. So who have we got online this morning? We've got quite a few people. Morning, Glynis. Good morning, Julie. Pam, lovely to see you. Rosie, wonderful. Glynis, how, hi, how are you all? I hope you're all well and I hope you're going to enjoy this and join me. So this is where I started with my journal. And it's little ideas like words and phrases that you like and 
just I love cow parsley at this time of year. So I've just written it pleases me and fills me with delight to see the beautiful cow parsley wafting and waving in the breeze. And just as a little touch, I've done swatches of the colour that I've used to add them there. Just makes it look interesting, doesn't it? Let me move that over like this so that you can see both pages. Bluebells, of course, at this time of year. And then I've written down a list of all the birds that I can see in my garden. I've pressed a few flowers and stuck in little bird feathers that I find in the garden. Blue tip, look, and it's got this iridescent blue on the tip. Beautiful. This was fun, this page. We're going to do a bit more of this tomorrow. To paint the picture and then to cut out and turn it into this wonderful sort of frieze. So that's a plan, more bird feathers. So do collect things like that when you see them. Our hangers at the moment, we're in Hampshire in the UK and we're in serious trouble at the moment um, with the hangers. The hangers, the hillsides, it's a word particular, peculiar to Hampshire, hillsides and this is where the trees hang down the hillsides. But we're suffering dreadfully at the moment from ash dieback and as a consequence all these poor trees are in a really bad way. It's a sad thing. Really sad thing. And cotton grass, I picked it, didn't know what to do with it. And then I thought, hang on a minute. So it's gone in the journal. Why not? And this is my day. And this is all coffee because my day works around the well, mornings, particularly um, the cups of coffee that I have. So I just thought that that was fun, what I do in my day. And so it goes on. Here we go, look. So just more cotton grass. This was beautiful. Look at that. So pop them in, do it. This was just playing with ideas for trees, shapes, how to stylize them so that I could use those ideas later on in the journal. And here we've got, this was a silk painting that I did with a friend and I didn't really know what to do with it. So I've just cut it out and I've stuck it in here with spray mount. And that, of course, is just part of the journal, isn't it? Why, why not put bits of fabric and things in? And this, you'll laugh, we went to a concert recently and, you know, when they shower the confetti on the crowd, well, this was showered down on us. I've stuck it in and I'm going to keep that until such a time as I'm painting something um, for the autumn months. And then when that's the case, I shall then quite happily get in there and start working into that. Maybe with some leaf prints. So we'll see about that. So for now, I'm going to ignore this page and work on to here. Now, one thing that's really, really worth mentioning is that if you want to do something like this, it's a good idea to have a decent journal with good paper. My paper's thin, and this is my big mistake. I like watercolour painting, and I wish, wish, wish I had bought a journal that had better watercolour paper. It's, this is a sketchbook, realistically. And so it's not as good as it could be, which is a shame. If you want to buy yourself a really good quality paper, I would be going for something like this. Let me just grab it so that you can see it and I can show you. Pink Pig, a company called Pink Pig, produce the most fantastic sketchbooks and it's good quality paper. So this is thicker. This is thicker paper. And so consequently, it's much easier to work on. And this is the, the book that I did the fungi in that you've probably seen. So it gives me options. Now, if you've got an issue with it, don't stress it. What I've done to get round the problem, if ever I want to paint a decent watercolour picture on here, I would paint it on a piece of paper and then simply stick it in. And it gives you the chances and the options to enjoy it and to really get in there and um, then decorate behind. So if you tear the edges to a watercolour piece and then stick it on, put it, stick it on tissue so that it kind of has a backing, things like that. But we'll get onto that in a week. Let's start drawing. Now, something that I like in my garden, but I don't like in my garden, is bindweed. It's so beautiful and I love to see it out and about, 
But when I get it in the garden, I'm there pulling it out. But it doesn't stop me wanting to paint it. I think it's beautiful. And so on this page, we're going to work into bindweed. We're going to do something with it. And, and basically, you've got a circular shape for the flower. And so I'm thinking about this kind of circle. And then I'm going to work into that. So we have the petals. And you've got some nice angles on there. It doesn't matter how you handle it. We're just going to come out here. And feel free later, if you want to, to come back and to find this. It'll be on my YouTube channel. I'll leave it there. And then you can come in. And if you want to, you could possibly come in and then use this and copy. I'm very happy for you to do that if you want to try it. The only proviso on that one is I'd love, love, love to see it. So I'm just going to come in and get rid of my pen, those original, that circle. Because it's worth noting that if you've got pencil marks on your work, the minute you put water on it, it sets it. So just be aware that it will set it and then you won't be able to get in there. Now, I'm a toad for wearing rings. I like rings and I find that sometimes it scratches my paper. So I just use a brush. And the pencil I'm using is a propelling pencil. This one here. So that's really, it's 2B. The lead is 2B, so it's soft, but it means that I'm not constantly sharpening a pencil. Now, you've got an interesting centre to these flowers. And then you've got this little bit in the middle here, stamen. And then I want to bring out these lines that, cu that cut the flower. And they all nip right into the centre like that. In and round and down. Another one in here through there. And then I'm just going to cut it like this. And then I want to pull that in through there. And then generally where this lies here, there's usually another little crease like this. So that's my flower. That's all right. Happy with that. Um, you could use watercolour ground on some of the pages, um, Julie. That's a really good idea, actually. Um, it, it gives it a bit more of a base that you can then paint on. And watercolour ground, everybody, is something produced by a company called Daniel Smith. Let me show you, because again, I have some. And then you can see what we're talking about. There we go. It's transparent. And you can put this on anything. You can actually paint it onto glass and plastic or rubber if you wanted to. And it gives you a base to be able to paint watercolour on top. And it's just a thin liquid, creamy liquid like this. And it's fabulous. So yes, you could use watercolour ground and it would stop the paper from being quite so absorbent, which is a good thing. It means it gives you time and it doesn't make the, pa the paper won't cockle as badly. So that's got to be good. So good idea that. Now I'm coming in here and I want to do a leaf. So I'm just wiggly, wiggly, wiggling the edges. And I'm coming up and I'm doing the same like this. So one leaf, I think it might be quite nice to have another through here. Because what we'll do is we'll put the plant here and we'll do some of the vining around the edges and then that will give us space in the middle to do some writing. So that's cool, that's good. Now the other thing I want to do is just drop down a bud or two. So fine, fine stem like this, and then I'm coming in. And these are funny little buds, these, like that. And then the white shows out like this, all right? So that's where we're going with that. And then I'm going to drop another one down here different angle. So you've got this teardrop shape here to start with. Let's put that like that and then do the white either side of it like this. And then from here, I want to pull out, coming round like this. 
and then that's so that's going to be a vine like this. So I'm just following that round. I thought about doing the drawing first, and I thought to myself, no, hang on a minute because people would probably like to see how I handle that. So we're going this route today. I hope that's all right with everybody. I've gone a little wide there. Don't want that. So I'm just coming back out, come down through there. And then I'm going to run another, and this one, I'm going to intertwine it. like this. Just pull it through and twist them. I need some more lead in my pencil. Up through there. Up and round. Just make it look interesting. Fill the page. Don't be frightened of it. It's just white paper. So we're going to just fill the page. Up and round twist in there because this stuff is not called convolvulus for nothing it gets everywhere and at the moment it's all in amongst my roses not for long my next job will be going out and getting rid of it there we are so that'll do me so that's given us a decent drawing that we can start working on and we can start painting with so that's that's super fine happy with that Okay, now, next thing we're going to use is some masking fluid. I'm sure you've come across this. Blue masking fluid, love it. We need that, we need a bar of soap, and we need a brush. And what on earth is a bar of soap for, I hear you say? Well, this stuff is like, just like copy decks. Remember copy decks for sticking and gluing? And it turns into this kind of latex rubber. And it means that we can paint and we don't land up with paint on the bits that we've used this. It will keep my flower nice and clean and white. But don't go straight in with the brush. Soap the brush first. So we're coming into the soap, making sure that every hair on that brush is covered. Now I'm getting rid of the excess and getting rid of the bubbles so that I can dip into my masking fluid and just around the edges of the flower, where it's going to show against the background, I just want to mask it out. And it means that I can paint my background and not stress over much. I want to get rid of those bubbles, because the paint, believe it or not, bursts the bubbles and goes through and you get lots of little spots of paint. So we don't want that. Not terribly worried about the leaves because the leaves and the and all the stalks I'm intending to paint them green anyway, so not terribly worried about that. But I do want to do these because I want to keep those pristine white. I don't want paint on those. Not for the moment, I don't. There we go. So I'm going to do that, and whilst that dries. I'm going to tell you about the colours that I want to use on my background. Oh, I've just thought, I do think, am I now? Yes, I'm going to put colour behind the flower up there. Because then it will make it stand out. So I will put colour up there. Okay. Right, so that's got to dry. I can rinse my brush now. And if I give it a wipe on my cloth... Lo and behold, the brush is lovely and clean. So it's the soap that keeps the masking fluid out of the brush. Wonderful. If you're interested and that intrigues you, there is a, um, a lesson on masking fluid on my own YouTube channel, where you are now, so that you can find how to use masking fluid. Colours, what are we going to use? Well, I want to use... Daniel Smith for the background. It's called Cascade Green and it's the most gorgeous colour. I love it to bits. Really, really like it. And I want to use this 
for my background colour because it bleeds into different colours. It bleeds into a kind of brown and a green and a blue. So I can show you all of that. I'm going to put some in my palette right here. Now this is a good excuse, this little job, to be using up bits and pieces in a dirty palette this week. Just use the bits that you've got in the main and it's a good way to use them up. The other colour I want to use is sap green. So I've got that here, that's in my palette. This beautiful yellowy bright soft green. So I want to use that. And then I want to use just a teeny touch of Payne's Grey. We're going to use this for the grey in the flower because we need shadows and shading in the flower. And I want to do that with a very, very pale grey, maybe with a teeny bit of green mixed in. So that's my plan. OK, the only other thing I think I might need is a teeny tiny touch of yellow for the centre of the flower. And to do that, I just want a smidgen. So you see, I'm going to use another palette here of Naples yellow. Can you see that? That very, very pale Naples yellow. So that's my plan. OK. Round the edges, I want to use this gorgeous, gorgeous cascade green. And how am I going to go about it? Well, I need a big brush because I want to come in here and cover a good area of it. I'm not going to necessarily paint in the middle here. And I want to kind of bleed the colour in. So how am I going to do that? Let's have a little approach on this, everybody, shall we? Start on the outer edges. Round here, I'm just going to wet the paper. And if it does cockle, it's not the end of the world. I'll just have to bite the bullet and get into it later and put the whole book, press it under something. Now, this is why I wanted to use Cascade Green. Look at that run. See the way that's all bleeding out? And this is what I wanted. Oops, somebody at the door. So if I come down here, look at the blue already just washing out of it. So I'm coming down here, avoiding the flower, the leaves. And I'm just going to wet all of this. And what I want to do is try and bring that green through, but not so much that it comes into the middle. So let's see what we can do with this. Unfortunately, we probably have to put a hairdryer on this later, so you have to bear with me. There you go. So just let the colour do its own thing. I know it bleeds into this gorgeous blue, and that's exactly what I want it to do. See, it's appearing here. I've got this blue just arriving. Love it. This is made up of um, Thalo blue, this colour, uh, mixed with um, raw sienna. And the two together don't like each other, so they split and divide and separate. And this is what gives us this interesting, interesting effect. So where it joins up here, a little bit more water just to encourage it. I don't want these hard edges around here, so I'm just coming in with a damp brush. And hopefully that will all do its own thing. That's what I want. That's what I want. Now, I've got some gold powder. I'll show you this in a minute so that you can see where I'm at with it. And all I'm going to do is put the end of a brush in it and flick it on. Now, the, odd, the odds are that as I'm working, I'm going to land up smudging that. I don't care if that lands up in the work and it's everywhere else. It suits me fine. I'm also going to rinse that in the water because now if I land up with little bits of glistening gold, in the water, that also suits me fine. I'm not fussy about where it lands. Now, what is this? This is called, it's Tro Coal Bronze. And this particular colour 
is Rich Pale Gold. And it's made by Schminke and it's literally metal powder, which has got gouache in it, which means that it will stick. So we can use it and it will stick on the paper because of the gouache, which is a glue effectively. So for us, that's absolutely marvellous. That's just what we want out of life. And you can paint with this and we'll maybe do a little bit of that later as well. So for now, I need to dry that. So please excuse me, I'm gonna make a bit of a racket just for a minute, but I don't think it will take long. So please just block your ears for a second, two minutes. Good morning from Gu to Guildford. Nice to have you with us. Um, Rosie, would you get a similar effect with Tharlow Blue and Royal Sienna? Um, yes, you do, but not as dramatic as this. Um, students of mine have tried it and we didn't find it to be that amazing. So I think probably it is also a case of what they use to bind it, I think, if I'm honest. So try it but I don't think you'll find it's as exciting as that, sadly. Shame, isn't it? If only it was that easy. But then again, I suppose that's why these people charge for their beautiful products, because they know that they've put the research and development into it, haven't they? Now I'm just going to use this. This is a clever little tool. This is called a mask away. And I'm going to just take away it does exactly what it says on the tin, it takes the mask away. And I'm not rubbing greasy fingers on my work and it's not going on the floor because of course, by doing that, I can now pick it off there and put it in the bin because this stuff's murder on carpets. And I've got a carpet in my studio. It, was, it used to be my son's bedroom. So uh, we've got carpet in here, not very practical, but I don't care, it's comfortable. There we are. So now the mask is away and we know that we've got this lovely, sharp, tight edge to the flower. The paper's cockled a little bit, but it's not the end of the world. I know that if I leave that flat or put it back on the bookshelf, it will all sort itself out. And that suits me absolutely fine. So what are we going to do now? The next thing, let's start with our flower, shall we? And I think I'm going to be working with something like number six. So I'm looking at, I've got gold floating on top of my water. So a brush this kind of size. I don't want it to be too big so that I can't handle it. Let's start with the middle of the flower because that will give us a bit of encouragement. And I'm just going to use my sap green and I want to drop this into here, like that, into there. And then I'm rinsing, dab, dab, to get rid of the liquid. And then if I come in from this side, I can gently blend that edge like that. Get rid of the colour, get rid of the drips. And now I want to come in. This is the only thing I want this yellow for. I'm just going to pick up a little bit of yellow while it's still damp. And I just want to drop it in there. And again, rinse it, dab, dab come in and just gently blend. Blend where the two colours meet and blend on that edge. And always, always come into the colour from the side that you want to blend. Don't go into the colour and pull it out. Come in from the side that you want to blend. Right, so what I want to do for my shading, I think I'm going to go for a little bit of Payne's Grey. Now, I don't need a lot because I don't want it to be dark. And I'm going to add a little bit of my green to that 
in actual fact it might be better to bring this Payne's Grey over to that green and this is muck off the palette really everybody look and that is the colour I'm looking for. Let's do up a separate piece of paper so that you can see what I'm wittering about. I want that kind of greeny grey. Okay, and I'm going to use that for my shading. There's not a lot of shading, so we don't need to be too excitable about it. But what we do need to do is come around the edge of the flower in some places and just put a little bit of shadow on. So we're going to come down there where we have an edge and a corner like that always blend it always bends shadow always curves rinse and dab come into the side you want to blend and just pull it through pay attention to where the creases are on the flower because you've got these crease lines down the flower so some of those are going to need definite shadows on them so now I'm going to come this side of, because this petal is curving down and over and round. And because I've got white paper here and the edge of the paper is white, I have to put shadow there. I don't have any choice. Otherwise, it's just not going to show. So I'm going to do a bit at a time. Put it in, rinse and dab. Come in from that side and just gently blend. And then we'll put some up here. So in and round. The edges aren't perfectly rounded, so don't be too excited about that. We've got another crease, so we'll need that kind of shape in there. And this time we've got to come in from this side. So it's a bit cat candid. And if you're working at home, you might find that you need to turn your work upside down and bend it round. That's OK. That's all right. So the other place I want to bring some colour and some shading is down here. So down on this side here, gently, gently. Because you've got to remember these little petals are curving. And then I'm coming in there and just blending that. And you'll find this technique much easier to do if you're working on watercolour paper. It has to be said, on flat paper like this, so this is this paper is cartridge paper really, um, you do struggle to get the techniques that you want. There's no denying it. I'm not going to tell you any different. So I want to put some shadows out through there. Rinse, dab, dab. That one, I come in that side. This one, I come in that side. Just a hint, hint, hint of a shadow. Okay. I want to run. Imagine this is quite a crease on that petal there. So I'm going to come down there, do that. And I'm blending it that side. It's all down to how much water you have on your brush. And this is why I'm always constantly going dab, dab on the cloth. Got to do it. Just got to do it. Now, where do we go with, with further um, shaping? I'm going to go down a brush size. So now I'm going for my number four. So it gives me more control. I've got a nice point, really nice point on this brush. And this is the one I now want to pick up a little bit more of the Payne's grey. Still going to mix it in with the green, but more of the grey. So it's darker, thicker. And this time I'm coming back into here. And I'm putting a really dark shadow in there. Like that. Now again, we can blend that. Same applies. The painting underneath is dry, so it's not going to move when I do that and I twiddle it. It's just got to be dry when you go in there. And now I'm going to use this brush for some of my delicate work. I want to reinforce my pencil lines. Shadows there, up in the creases. Don't make them too thick, so I'm just using the tip, tip, tip of the brush. Pull some in from the outer edge, like that. I want to keep it really kind of ephemeral and loose and soft. 
this one here, because this comes down to the darkened edge, little triangle there where the shadow expands up and round. Same applies there, a bit darker there. Like that. We'll have just a few more little lines to give you the curve of the flower, that, that opulent curve. Like this. Some little ones, some long ones. It's all super fine. I want more coming out of the centre of the flower like this. Like that. And then I'm going to just introduce a few here. Okay, now we're going to leave that and see how it looks in comparison when we do the leaves. So we'll just do a bit and a bit. All right, I'm not going to go mad for it, just want to do a bit and a bit. Now, it's the most convenient thing to do is start at the top and work down. So up here with this leaf, let's start with our lovely, lovely sap green. And I think I need to go up a brush size again because that one is now too small. So back to the number six, jumping about. And what I'm going to do here is take the sap green I'm going to introduce it to, imagine the lights falling on the leaf. Think about where the light would be. Let's get that edge beautifully smart first. I'm picking up the gold now. So that's fun too. Let's get the edge of that leaf in like that. Bring it through. Don't worry about veins because the veins are going to come in later. Now I'm going to pick up a little bit of the cascade green and I'm going to mix it in with the sap green. And that's going to be the darker edge inside of the leaf. So a bit of sap green in with a bit of cascade green in with sap green. See, that's the problem. The, the mouth's doing one thing and the hand's doing something else. And then you find that they don't always work together, which is a great shame. And I'm thinking about what I'm going to do next. And it just doesn't always work together, which is very sad, really. Now, I'm just going to do a bit of this dib dib dabbing, which isn't something I would normally advocate. But at the moment, it could pay dividends because these leaves are a bit sort of wonky and wibbly wobbly so that will give us some texture on the leaf all right now this leaf here where it's coming out from underneath the flower i want this to be darker down here all right so let's concentrate on that this one will be the other way around we'll be working from the sap green paler side of the leaf down here so i think we'll start with that first because it keeps the brush clean if we start from light and work through to dark. So pull it up and through. And then I want to start thinking around about now for the darker green. So I'm going to go into the cascade green. Don't use it on its own necessarily. I'm going to mix it with the sap green. And then I'm going to introduce the two together. And if your brush has a bit and a bit on it, and so the paint isn't all quite one colour or the other, that is also fine because that gives you quite an interesting mixed, it's called double loading. And it gives you a kind of mixed affair, which isn't bad at all. It gives you this kind of change in colour. Rinse, dab and dab, and then I'm coming in and I'm going to zigzag back and forward through the two colours. And then that means I can use my brush to texturise the leaf. I want it textured so that when I go over the top of it and I paint some of the veins in, I will see the texture. That's what I'm after. Okay, that's all right because they're quite wobbly. Smaller brush into these. Let's do these now. So again, I want to use my sap green initially. So we're going to put the sap green on like that. And then 
up here on the top of the bud. I want that to be darker. So now I'm going to come in and just pick up some of the cascade green. Decide which side of the bud's going to be darker. I'm going to run with, if my light's coming down this way, I'm going to go down there. Let's go into this, same applies. We start with a sap green, let's put that in. Just feed it in. And something I will say about journals, there is no pressure. It's not like painting a picture where you're immediately thinking to yourself, what am I going to do with it? Where will it go? Will it go in a, in a frame? Am I going to use it for an exhibition? The answer to all of this is no. This is just for you, just for you and your friends, just for your memory, just to look at it and think to yourself, hey, you know what? This is gonna be good. So the next thing we want to do here is come round and we're going to do the stems of our leaves, of our plant. Now, let's use a little mixture. I've got sap green mixed watery in my palette. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to Rinse that, put some paint water in there, look, see? I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to take a brush full of sap green and I'm going to get stuck in. So you need a nice, steady hand. Easier said than done. I'm using my little finger as a guide on the paper. So I'm not really moving my hand, I'm moving my hand round my little finger. You see what I'm doing? And it works quite well. So I want to come into this one here too. And we'll put some shadows in in a second. There we are, look at that. I see we've got the usual spam in the comments, everybody. Sorry about that. Doesn't matter what you do, you can't avoid these people when you're live on Facebook and on YouTube. So just bear with it. I'll get rid of it all later so that it's not there to offend you. You'd think they'd have something better to do with their time, wouldn't you? There we are. So I'm going to come through there. Unless, of course, it's a robot. In which case, we have to moan at the programmer, don't we? There you go. So you see, using my little finger, I'm just trawling my way through all the stems, bit at a time, trying to do both of them at once so that I'm not leaning on one when I have to come back to approach it again. But you know, if you go over the edges, it doesn't. If you were outside painting and it was windy and you were it being threatened with rain, who would care? Does it matter if you bit, have a bit of a wibble wobble? No. So don't worry about it. Do your best. My dad used to say, you can only do your best and that's good enough. So I'm coming round and through. Bada boom, like that. Oh, do you know, looking cool. Looking cool and rustic, and that's okay. I'm just shifting my chair back so that I can get at that. And then I think I'm going to have a little go at this bit. It's tricky when you can't move the um can't move the paper or the page. If this was me at home on my own, I'd be moving the book around, but at the moment I'm just having to shuffle, shuffle my chair about through the lovely gold. We haven't disturbed the gold too much, have we, interestingly enough? So that's that's good too. Round here. So that's that's the boring bit done, really. There we are. 
but it is lovely to have the vines like that I think I do like to see it and the, the twistier and the more interesting you make those the, the better that would be if I'm frank you know just go for it when you're at home on your own just go for it now I feel that my flower now is not as dark as it could be to, to pick up on this. I think I want more shading down this side. So I'm going into a big brush now. So we, we're not frightened of this, we're gonna go for it, all right? This is number eight. And I'm picking up a little bit of my Payne's Gray with the green mix in it. So I'm just doing that. And I've got a really thin watery mix. And I'm going to come in and I'm just going to do this. This is called glazing. And then I'm going to just soften all of that edge. And that will probably cauliflower. Now, what does cauliflower mean? This is a cauliflower where I've got water coming back into drying paint and it kind of pushes its fingers into the paint. And that edge is just like a cauliflower floret, and that's a cauliflower, but it doesn't matter. Really, really doesn't matter. I want a little bit of green. I'm going for the sap green, and I want to introduce that on the stamen, like that. And I'm just going to blend that away. And then I need to think about my flowers. I can't leave them white against white. It's nonsense, it doesn't work. So I've got to think about what I'm going to do with those. Therefore, I have to, have to come into the gray color. And I've got to just go around the edges like that, all right? And then I have to put a little bit of shadow down one side of them so that they stand out. Because otherwise, they're just there and they're hiding in plain sight, you can't see them. So I'm just going to do that, soften that. And now they stand out and that's just what we want. This is, we have no definition around this at all. So I'm going to come into that with my Cascade Green. And where one stalk goes underneath another, this shadow. So therefore, where that comes out from underneath there, that would be shadowed. And we're just going to quietly work our way around and have a serious think. This one is on top, so this one's behind, like that. Keep it nice and sharp, the edges against the this stalk, so that you get that lovely, sharp, dark edge. This one is on top, so this one is behind. So I need shadow in there. And then this one comes round, this one is underneath, so I've got to put a shadow there. Pick up more paint. This one goes underneath, so we're just working that out. This one is underneath. It's funny, isn't it? The phone rarely goes in this house and then just because I'm on here, the phone goes. There we go. Under here. And there, like that. And that's giving us depth. It's giving us the idea that one is behind the other rather than it just being a tangle. So we do that. And that makes such a difference. Do it carefully. Like that. Keep the edges sharp if you can. And then one more to do up here and Bob's your uncle. Now, if you decide that you need a little bit of extra clout, I'm not sure about these colours here. I want to come in there and I'm going to use my Cascade Green and I just want to put a bit more shadow behind this flower. 
down there like that. Rinse, dab, dab, and then just come in with this kind of seesaw motion. And that looks better, doesn't it? Because that puts that right behind there now. If you wanted to go around all of these shadings that you've put in and just dig into the edge like that, that will soften all of those, so you can do that. I'll do mine for tomorrow so that you can see it, but I won't waste your time with that right now. What I want to do now is think about the veins on my leaves. So I'm going to come into that with a rigger brush. So that is this lovely, thin, long, spiky brush, just like this. That's a rigger brush. Here we go, look. Lovely and thin. And a rigger brush is desi was designed by Turner to paint the rigging on ships because it holds a lot of paint and can give you a lovely thin line and you just keep going. If you use the teeny tiny, this is a zero as well, you see the difference. This would only draw a line of this, this long. This one will just keep going. It's a reservoir brush. So I want to load up with my Cascade Green. I want to make sure I haven't got blobs of paint on the end of the brush, so I'm just pulling it against the edge of the palette. And that means that I can come into here, right down the middle of the leaf, and put my first vein in. And then if I come out through here, I can drop some of the others in. Excuse my hands, sorry, it's gonna be in your way. And then I want some through here. And we can do this, put our little veins in. All right. And the key to this is using the brush right on the tip. If you go flat, you get a much thicker line. So just use it 90 degrees if you can. It's a bit cack handed, but trust me, it really is worth it. You can get these lovely thin lines because this is what we're after. All right, so straight down the middle here. Into it like that. And this again gives your light, your leaf definition and makes it look interesting. We want, I mean, it is nature journaling, so we want to be as true as we can to it. If you can, it's always wonderful to actually have the actual leaf itself in your hand so that you can work with it. Now, the next thing I want to do with this is to come into it and just embellish a little bit, not a lot, but a little. And I'm going to use a dip brush, a dip pen like this. Dirt cheap on eBay or Amazon. And I want to use, this is Windsor & Newton's Gold Calligraphy Ink. And it really is gold. It's very, very beautiful. And I just want to use it to pretty up my leaf a little bit. You need to use it on dark things because that's how it's going to show up. And if we use it with a dip pen, we can get a lovely fine line. So I just want to come along some of my veins, and put some gold veins, extra veins on my leaves. I hope you can see that on, on film. Let's try it in the dark down here so that you can see. But that's a really lovely thing to do, just, just to give it a real hit, you know, hit. These lovely little covers for the flowers, they have lines on them. So I'm going to do that with this as well. And of course you can write with this. So we could come in here. Keep it filled. Don't think you can get away with it because you can't just keep. There you go. So you can write with it too. 
blocked up now. I didn't shake it well enough, I suspect. So we have that option as well. I'm just going to give that a rinse. So a few little bits and pieces of embe embellishment. And it, it's just to give your eyes something to look at, you know, to make your picture interesting, for your eyes to travel around it, to see all the different things that you have in there. Now, I would personally, if it were me, and it is me, so I'm going to do it, I want to come in and pick up my greeny grey. And I'm using my thin, thin brush and I just want to come in there. And I'm just, I need it thicker than that. It's not enough colour. I want to pull that colour through there. That needs to stand out against the background and it doesn't. And the same applies down here. I need to come in there and really reinforce that so that it stands out. Light against dark, dark against light, always. That's better. That's better. See it now. Now, the other thing I want to do for you today, just finally, I've dripped on the paper. Let's get rid of that. I steal them. Well, I don't steal them. I keep them. My napkins from that well-known fast food chain. And they're, they're perfect for what we want to do. I want to come in here and I want to show you something quite interesting and special. If you would like to, we are going to now think about water droplets. I want a tiny little brush and I'm using my Payne's Grey. And what I'm going to do here on this petal, make sure it's dry, is I'm going to come in perfectly round, shadow underneath, rinse, dab, dab, and blend, and blend. Same grey, inside now the, so that was outside, that's the shadow, and this is now inside. This is a shadow on the water drop. So we have it pale grey like that, but I want it to be quite dark on this side. And quite dark in under there. And that gives us a water droplet on there. How do we then do that down here on the leaf? To make something see-through, you have to paint what's there first. So we've done that, we've done all that, we make sure it's dry. And then I'm going to come in with my Payne's Grey. Thank you, Julie, it looks fabulous, she says. Thank you very much, I hope so. And then I'm going to pop in another droplet there. So this will be my shaded side. And you make them look fat by making the shadow bigger. That makes it look as though it's standing up proud of the leaf. So we've done that. Shape's important. You've got to keep it beautifully around. And then if we come into it and we put our shadow inside it, to do that. So, then, so you can still see everything underneath. You can still see the vein. If you're going to do that, make sure you've got a vein or something going through because then you're just showing off. You're proving that you can do it. This one, I'd like that to be just a teeny bit greyer through there. So I'm just adding an extra bit. Don't do that unless that's dry, everybody. So that's fine. So what do we do when we're doing it on something? So again, I'm going to take my grey, Payne's grey, and we'll do a water droplet on here. So this curves up and round and down. And then you have the shaded side, just the same. Come in, blend, like that. 
And the last thing you need to make that look real is to take white paint. So I've got white gouache. This is Windsor and Newton's designer gouache. And then what we're going to do is just dip into the paint in the tube. I'm a very naughty girl, you know. I when I'm demonstrating, I just do this, and it's naughty because sometimes you leave colour in the in the tube, and that's just what I've done there. And all we're going to do is a bling of light there. Look how that just suddenly does that. It just ka-ching. And then we're going to put a little, and you've got to put this in the dark area, and a little bling of light in that one. And then I want a little ka of light in there. Like that. And you can, if you want to, that light will go straight through to that side. Straight through that, that ring into there. And it comes out through the back. So that is how you would paint water droplets. And what I'm going to do here is take a decent pen. So I've got to look for a pen. I want one that's not going to, um, that's waterproof really. Let's see if this one will work for me. Yep. So a waterproof pen. And the reason why I wanted some space down here is life began in water. Without it, dot, 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 there would be no life. There you go. Water, the most important thing ever. And without it, we have nothing. We can't live without it. We started in it and we can't live without it. So, my lovely people, let you, would you like to come back to me now? So I'm just going to tip the camera again, so hold fire. There we are. So I just want to say to you, thank you very, very, very much for joining me today. And I'd love for you to come back tomorrow. And tomorrow, our subject is going to be sharing. So what could we do with sharing? It would be lovely if you wanted to, if you'd like to, to pop some, some of your pictures and paintings in the comments under here, and we can have a look at those for tomorrow. That would be quite exciting. But I'm going to continue sharing with you because that's exactly what we're doing here, isn't it? I thought tomorrow, don't laugh, I'm going to show you some bamboo tomorrow and how I would paint it and cut it out um, for my journal. Bamboo. Bamboo you can overshare. I have that issue with my next door neighbour's bamboo coming to join me in my garden. So tomorrow, why don't you come and join me and let's do it all again. Same time, 10 o'clock, same place. And I would love, love, love for you to be with me tomorrow. And do have a look online at the International Nature Journaling website. There's lots there to see, lots of videos, lots of inspiration, other people's drawings. There's also a Facebook page. So go have a look, see what you think. Until then, love you all. Bye bye for now.